Coming up, a California singer-songwriter who had many hits in the 70s and 80s tells us the story of his genre-defining 1977 hit, How to Capture the Nation. It's now a bona fide classic. You're gonna get a kick out of this guy. The story is next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you've ever uh, played air guitar when one of the great rock and roll solos comes on the radio, you're gonna wanna subscribe to this channel. You'll be a fan. You, you don't wanna miss an episode. We do this every single day. Also, if you wanna help support our mission of curating the history of the rock and roll era, the story straight from the legends, you can also get more content. Check us out on the Patreon link below. It really helps us out. Now, today we continue our new show, uh, Yacht Rock Smoothies, stories behind the smoothest songs in the harbor. Yacht Rock, like I said, is one of my favorite genres. I was raised on this music from the 70s and 80s, and really glad that uh, new fans and really a whole new generation are discovering and appreciating you know, these truly sophisticated, meticulously crafted rock and pop ditties. Uh, they're just masters of their craft. And today we get to know a true master of the craft of songwriting, multi-platinum singer-songwriter, and one of Eric Clapton's favorite songwriters, Mr. Stephen Bishop. Stephen has had uh, countless hits that you'll no doubt recall, including It Might Be You, the love song from Tootsie. Me it might be you. He also wrote Separate Lives. It was beautifully covered by Phil Collins and Marilyn Martin from White Nights. That went to number one in the mid 80s. Just a moving song. Also, Save It For A Rainy Day. which featured aforementioned Eric Clapton, great guitar solo there in Shaka Khan. He also wrote and performed one of my favorite songs, the 1977 hit On and On. on, and on, on, and on. Peaked at number 11 on the Hot 100 and it went to number two on the AC charts. It actually spent a whopping 28 weeks in the charts total up next, Stephen tells us the story of this classic hit, how it came about, and about his first album. And as we go into this interview, I want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses I wear all the time. You know, the best thing about Zenny right now is their Blue Blocks feature, which you can add to any of your frames at zenny.com. I have it on all of mine. Uh, they do a great job of protecting your eyes from digital blue light that we come into contact all the time. Uh, check it out today. Here's Steven with the story. On and On is like a classic of Yacht Rock. It's like one of the 10 yeah. greatest Yacht Rock songs ever. On and on, she just keeps on trying. I mean, seven months on the chart, went to number 11, but it was so much bigger than his chart. Number six in Canada, number two on the AC charts, but that is a crossover song. Andrew Gold on guitar, that had yeah, a couple Jay of- Jay Graydon, Andrew yeah, Gold. Yeah, Victor Feldman. Victor Feldman, marimba. It was kind of a nice respite from disco because disco was huge at that huge. moment. On and on, the thing I loved about that song is that you wrote so well from those people's perspective. I mean, you could, very cinematic in that you could relate to who you were talking about, Jimmy, and she smiles when she feels like crying. And, and it smiles and it feels it really started, you know, I say this in concert, but uh, it really started from the chord. Um, you know, I, I, would, I would play this chord over and over, and I just loved it so much. And I, and I had to do something with this chord, and, and I would play it like day after day, and uh, I wouldn't sleep and wouldn't eat, and just kept playing this chord, and soon my, people from miles around would come just to hear this chord. <laughs> and I thought, I better do something with this chord, so I did. So I, you know, at first I was gonna go, bum, bum, you know, and all the different choices you have, you know. Um, you know. But um, I, was, I was living uh, in Silver Lake, I had a landlady that had all these named Violet Marshall. <laughs> I still remember her name. And uh, she had all these exotic flowers from all over the world. And it kind of gave me a little sense of you know, worldly vibe, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I hadn't been anywhere other than Tijuana at that point, because I was from San Diego. That's where my 
my folks used to take me to get my hair cuts, you know. I'd, I'd tell the guy, the guy, you know, a, a little bit off the side, a little, you know, I was in high school, you know, it was like my beetle thing was strong and I really had a great beetle type haircut. And then uh, my stepfather was there and, and he looked at the guy and in Spanish, and he gave me a buzz cut. So then I had to go to school with a buzz cut, and it was really a drag. Anyway, this is a song on and on that uh, one of the great first lines. Down in Jamaica. Yeah. Down in Jamaica, they got lots of pretty women. Well, that was part of it. You know, I wanted to feel like I was somewhere else, and um, I'd, I'd never been to Jamaica. In fact, I finally went to Jamaica, and I. Uh, I was worried about it at first because I thought, oh, I hope nobody's going to beat me up because I, because <laughs> because I had um, Bob. I've said this before, but I had Bob Marley's uh, uh, widow. I think her name was Rita Marley. She uh, saw me at some party, and she said, "Ah, oh, you're Stephen B. Sharp. Jamaican women, they do not steal your money and break your heart." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh." <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> and I said, well, a poetic license? Well, such a great story song, too, because you tell the story from two different people's perspective, and then in the end, you personalize it. But I love the bridge, especially that note that you hit at the end of the bridge. It's a hard note to hit, that note. Yeah. In concert. You know, it's always like, I always dread it. Right? When, when the first time is like way up there, is the last time it can make you feel so bad. But if you know it, show it, hold on tight, don't let her say it. God, I'm exhausted already. Bridge is really interesting because it's so distinct and different from the rest of the song. So yeah. It's like two different songs. love the line puts on Sinatra Audrey and starts to cry and I was wondering as a kid I wonder what Sinatra album he's listening to puts on Sinatra and starts to cry on and on. I actually saw Sinatra yeah it was pretty thrilling um I saw Sinatra I was never a big fan when I was growing up I was too into the Beatles Stones Kinks you know all of a sudden I get older and um when somebody loves you, it's no good unless they love you. Right. All the way. You know what gets me is uh, his vocal on Each place I go, only the lonely oh, know. Yeah. Each place I go. I'll tell you this story. This is a good story. This is yeah. a good on and on story. I did a demo of on and on years and years and years, like about actually about two years before uh, we wound up doing on and on or maybe a year. And, and um, my friend then named Michael Staten, now named Billy London, he played Hawaiian Steel. <laughs> on this demo and I loved it. I thought it was really unique and, and great. We're getting ready to go in the studio and we're in this, you know, here we are. And I have him in the studio and he's recording. He does like one or two takes. He goes, that's good. I go, what? Wait a minute. You gotta, we, this, we're not ready. It's not, it's not done. You gotta have to keep playing. We, we're still recording. You know, that's not, you're not done. Yeah, it's good for me. It's good for me. I'm going. Bye. And boom. He leaves. I go, what? So I tell his brother, I go, tell him to get back here. He's not, you know, blah, blah, blah. He wouldn't come back. So I go, I mean, I'm going to get Sneaky Pete. So I think, I, in my naive way, I think, oh, I'm going to get that guy Sneaky Pete because he'll be great, you know. So he comes, Sneaky Pete comes in the studio. And we have, I don't think I've ever told this story. And we have Sneaky Pete there. And I go, all right, here we go, on and on. And he's going, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> like nothing but heavy country steel guitar. Right. Doo, doo, doo. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm like, uh, oh, sh I go, I got to get Mike back here. <laughs> so I did. And he, he wound up doing four takes of the steel. I wound up mixing them. 
Some of them had bad notes, and I knew where the bad notes were, so I mixed all his steel. So if you listen to On and All, it's heavy uh, Hawaiian yeah. steel, but it's a unique, a unique track for that. But you personalized it at the end. Was that just poetic license, or was it something that you were feeling at the moment? Because, you know, the last lines were saying, got the sun on my shoulders and my toes in the sand. Sun on my shoulders and my toes in the sand. My woman's left me for some other man, but, ah, but I don't care. I just dream and stay tan. Toss up my heart to see where it lands. Toss up my heart to see where it lands. Oh, it really, be something. Brilliant. It is. It had to be something you were going through, but... Well, at the time, I, I, I think I was, you know, I was a little, you know, down on uh, just, there was a couple of girls that I dated back then in the 70s or something, and I was just, I think I, I, there's an element of a little bit being uh, slightly uh, perturbed, and I, I threw that in there, you know, but it's really not that much. It's just, uh, saw his woman kiss another man. So You just come up with this stuff. On the chorus, the last chorus, I love how change it from crying to dying. Yeah. She smiles when she feels like crying. And I smile when I feel like dying. Tell me a little bit about how you came up with that chorus, because this was just one of the great chorus, the on and on. Mm -hmm. I just keep on trying. And I smile when I feel like dying. On and on, on and on, on and on, on and on, on and on. Yeah. Talk about it. way up there, boy. That's a bitch to get up there uh, these days. And then people get so impressed. Oh, gee, he's an older man and he can still hit those notes. <laughs> on on. Tell me. Where did that come from besides the exotic flowers? Was it something where you wrote it all in one gist or yeah. did it come? On my know? bed in Silver Lake, I wrote it. Or was that my chair? I had a chair <laughs> in Silver Lake that was this big chair and I loved it and I always wrote in that chair. It had a, like an ottoman and I put my songbook there. I still miss that chair. <laughs> and I'd sit and write and with the ottoman. It's perfect. And I wrote uh, Same Old Tears on a New Background there. It's the same old tears on a new back. Looking for the right one there. I'm looking for the right. I wrote On and On there. I just keep on trying. It's been covered a lot of times. I mean, the reggae version from yeah. 89 that went to the top 25 in the UK. As what? Kenny Rankin had kind of a jazzier version, right? Yeah, he had a really good version. I liked yeah. his version. He was a good buddy of mine. On and, on, on and, on, on and on. In the 70s, actually, it was released a few months after yours, right? 77 when he released his, that version. Unknown story is Kenny Rankin uh, was looking for songs back in like 76. And um, I said, I've got some songs, but I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I recorded it for my album. You know, I don't know if you'd be interested in the song because I'm. He said, Well, you've got to promise me that you won't release it <laughs> as a single. It killed. He got so mad at me. He was really mad, and we were playing baseball on this team, you know, with a bunch of people, and I was like in the backfield of all things with Kenny Rankin. and he comes over to me, he goes, arr, arr, and he was like really pissed off, <laughs> and as life you know, turns around, we became the best of friends. Wow. Used in a, a ton of movies too. Anger Management, How to Deal, The Hitcher, Margo at the Wedding. I mean, there's just been a lot oh, of- Oh yeah, that Margo at the Wedding's a great scene. I got a big kick out of that. Jack Black is talking to his uh, girlfriend who, or his wife who's breaking up with him. And then somebody in the background is playing on and on. And then he actually says, is that Stephen Bishop <laughs> in the background? Down in Jamaica. <laughs> What do you think of the song now? Like, what does it mean to you so many years later? 
just like a kind of like a relative, or I guess, you know, like a, 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 or so, something that's, uh, you know, it's lasted with me the, all these years. And I, when I play it, people love it, you know. It, wow, he still, rem he still remembers the words. But, uh, you know, uh, what do I think of it now? That's a good question. Um, you know, it's like one of my little children. You yeah. know, I have written pff, how many songs now? 650, 700 some songs in my life. Most of them are awful. <laughs> you know, my early days, I had like, you know, songs like Benny the Wharf Rat, Be Beer Can on the Beach, uh, There's a Hair in Your Enchilada, Will There Ever Be a Sunday in Nebraska? Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I'm a ton of, ton of these, you know. And, and I, you know, I, I would write these songs, you know, The Sparrows in the Watermelon. <laughs> That's got to be the best time. What a weird title. Oh my the heavens. sparrows and the watermelon. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking back then. Well, this I wrote is why, like 200 songs before I was 16. Well, this is one of your songs that grew up to be, as uh, Billy Joel says the same thing, is, is kid, you know, songs for like children. Some grow up to be lawyers and presidents and magistrates, and some grow up to be losers. Yeah, losers. But On and On was definitely, grew up to be a... Uh, I don't know, it just, it's one of those songs that just, I mean, on and on, I'm, I'm really proud of it, you know, I mean, uh, I, I, I think the lyrics are really good, and I, I'm, I'm proud of that song, actually, yeah. Hey, thanks so much for watching, isn't it funny? Uh, make sure to leave us a comment below about this song, about Stephen Bishop, Bish. Uh, what specific memories do you have about these classic 70s and 80s soft rock or yacht rock classic hits? What other songs should we cover on here? Let us know in the comments. If you like our video, we do invite you to subscribe to this channel right now to get your daily dose of rock history, uh, rock and roll era, uh, content you really won't get anywhere else. Also, if you're able to, check out our Patreon link below for even more content. Help us keep the music alive, very important. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.